Welcome to my channel. My name is Credit Coach Nicole Scott. We're going to be learning how to repair credit in today's video. This video is going to be broken up into two parts and you want to make sure that you have watched both parts along with the entire credit repair training playlist. The link is below for all of the training videos so you can learn how to repair credit and start a credit repair business using a software called Credit Repair Cloud. Credit Repair Cloud is a great tool to help you automate the process of data, basically. It's bringing data from your credit monitoring onto one location so you can easily add that information and track that information as time progresses, easily create dispute letters, and be able to have a tracking all in one place. It does all the work for you. So it really helps save time. And you know, you do get a free 30 day trial so you can try it out. It's very user friendly. Um, now you don't have to use software. I recommend using software cause it saves time and ultimately time is money, right? But, um, if it's not in your budget, you can take this same concept and use Microsoft word. You can use Google docs because you just have to take the concept of it and apply it to your situation, right? Uh, that's why I teach the concept of credit podcast. So if you haven't watched my podcast, which is called the credit concept podcast, make sure that you check that out. The link is below so you can check that podcast out on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. But without further ado, guys, if you have not by now, I want to make sure that you have subscribed to the channel on YouTube, Credit Coach Nicole Scott. Make sure that you follow me on Instagram, Credit Coach Nicole Scott. I am on TikTok and Facebook as well, but I don't get paid for videos on there. So I prefer if you watch my videos and support me on YouTube and Instagram. Um, I actually do get paid on Facebook by reels, but the main platforms are Instagram and YouTube because that's who pays me the most. So I would highly appreciate if you are finding value in my videos, in my training, whether it's with credit repair cloud, how to build credit, um, you know, how to build business credit, how to build personal credit or anything that I speak of on my videos. It's all related to personal credit and business credit to help you leverage your credit to create multiple streams of income. Okay. Because nowadays we need to have multiple streams of income. And that is so important, especially in 2023 where inflation is as real as it gets. Eggs are damn near a dollar a piece. Let's go. We need to make more money. Okay. So credit repair is a great way to add an additional stream of revenue to the services and products that you already offer. So if you have a large network of people that you are associated with, start providing products and services, start promoting yourself on social media. You don't, it's okay to have a job, right? It's actually recommended that you have, you know, one source of income that is consistent, whether that is, you know, you owning one main business that provides all of your income or whether that's being an employee, we need one main source of income. That is our bread and butter. We need additional streams of income because every millionaire has at least seven streams of income and credit repair can be one affiliate marketing can be another one. Uh, rental car business, Turo, something like that can be another one. Vending machine companies, ATM companies, a lot of these businesses that we can start would be basically free for us because we could use credit to start them. So we don't have to pay our cash to a business. We can buy all of the things that we need with credit and leverage 0% interest uh, on some of these personal and business credit cards that are out there. So man, now is the time. If you are working on your personal credit, or if you want to start helping other people with their credit, you guys need to get serious about that and start taking action. 
Yes, it takes a little bit more time and investment when you initially start, right? I had to make those same investments with my time and my money. But as time progresses, you will see that all of these investments that you are making, whether that's with your time, watching videos, studying and learning, and then actually implementing that and investing in coaching and mentorship and marketing, all of these things are super important and that those are all things that i cover so if you feel like you need mentoring you need coaching you need help just getting it all together and getting a plan out there because it's so hard there's so much to do and it's so confusing and you know it took me a really long time to kind of get everything to together and i've been doing this now for over three years so you know um this is just one of many streams of income that I do. And uh, another stream is I provide coaching. I have courses, I have digital products, I do Turo. There's a number of things that I do as well. And you know, I'm like everybody else. I'm just trying to be successful, right? But I want you guys to have that same success because when I first started, I had a hard time finding a mentor that actually went through this, that actually did have a credit repair business that was affordable to use. That was, you know, someone that I could relate to. That was someone that, you know, wasn't already a millionaire, but really went through the struggles of, you know, being able to create and build a business from the ground up from nothing like when i first started this business i had just had a baby like i wanted to start a business when i was pregnant because i knew now i can't just rely on one source of income i have someone else that i have to provide for um, and I need to put it in high gear. Okay. So that's a little bit about me guys. And I know I kind of went off subject there, but you want someone that you can relate to. You want someone that's going to keep it real with you. You want someone that's going to say, yeah, you know, I've invested in these courses and, and mentorships that were thousands and $5,000. And, um, you know, sometimes mentorships are very, very helpful. Don't get me wrong. I highly recommend mentorships, but at the end of the day, you need to invest in multiple mentorships and multiple coaches in order for you to really get the success that you need. So even though you are in mentorships and you've invested in mentorships, it's always important for you to invest in a coach, someone who is relatable to you. And I am one of those coaches that I've seen struggle, I've seen success, I've seen struggle again. I've seen success again. You know, running a business in operations is nothing new to me. I've been in business management and business operations for the last 15 years. And I definitely can, you know, relate because we've seen the industry shift from being in person to being online. And now we can build a successful online business and not have to leave our home. So that's the beauty of it. And that's why it is so impactful now because we can help people throughout the United States and we can, you know, literally help change people's lives. And that's the great thing about it. I've been able to impact so many people's lives in a positive manner. It literally is like, rewarding um you know when people schedule calls with me and i hear things like you know i feel like i already know you i enjoy your videos it just makes me feel so great because i know that all the hard work and time and effort and money that i put into making these videos for you guys you really appreciate them you're taking them serious because these are some things that like i always say to you guys were not available to me when I first started my business. So I want you guys to really take this serious, um, watch these videos over and over and make sure that you're taking them all in. Cause I don't know how long they're going to be on YouTube for free. I'm just going to keep it real with you. Um, and I don't know how long I'm going to be making these types of videos for you guys to be learning from. So I want you to take this information, save it, share it with a friend. If you're finding value in these videos, share them on Facebook, share them on your social media, um, share them with your contacts in your phone, with your you know, colleagues at work, friends, whomever that can find value in these videos, share them because uh, it's free to share and I earn 
by views and watch time. So I am greatly appreciative. Um, and I will quit talking your guys ear off and get, get to the, get to the good stuff. So this is a client that just signed up and we're going to be onboarding them and just making sure that they've done everything. We're ready to dispute and get the party started. So first things first, we're in the client's dashboard and you want to go into the view edit profile and you want to just make sure that all of that information in there is complete. Okay. You want to make sure they have a first name, a last name. You want to make sure their email address is in there. Um, their mailing address, everything is accurate. If there is an apartment number, make sure you manually type that in, in the mailing address, last four of the social birthday, all of these things you need to make sure are accurate. You can also change the client status. We have different status groups, A, B, and C based on when the client signed up so we can stay organized. Now I highly recommend that you adjust your client statuses. You can do that under the, my company tab, and you also want to, um, adjust their start date. So you know what day they actually started your program. You can, uh, assign them to different team members. You can select if they were referred by anyone and um, that's really the most important thing. By now you have already selected an agreement. So this is after you have sent them an agreement, they have agreed, they have made a payment and they are ready to rock and roll. Okay. And you can see here, um, our payments are set up still in credit repair club, but if you're a new user, you won't see this on your end. So, um, just make sure that you have edited the profile because this is all of the information that's actually going to show up on the client's dispute letters. So whatever information you put in here, this is what's going to automatically generate onto the letters because credit repair cloud helps us automate the process. We're going to hit our back button. Now, sometimes back buttons don't always do us justice inside of the app here. So you might have to select it again, but typically I don't use the back button for that reason. But when you are editing the profile, sometimes you have to, um, okay. So now we just want to make sure that the client has signed their agreement. Now this client has not signed their agreement yet. In fact, we can tell from the progress that they have not even logged in yet. So what I did earlier was I actually resent them their login details. So they have it and they can log in and sign their agreement because I do not want to send out any letters for this client until they have signed the agreement, which gives us a limited power of attorney to actually be able to send, um, letters on their behalf. If they don't sign it, then we would have to send the letters to the client and have them print and mail. Uh, sometimes we do do that where we would send the PDF file of the letters directly to the client and they print and mail their own letters. In fact, it's probably best practice to do that. So you don't have to pay for the postage or be responsible for anything when it comes to the dispute letters. So, um, now, you know, you just want to make sure that the agreement is done. We're going to generate the letters, but again, we're not going to send nothing out. Um, we're just going to do it so you guys can see the process. You also want to make sure that their photo ID and their utility bill is uploaded. Now keep in mind the photo ID and the utility bill, which are basically line three and line four. Those are the only two attachments that are going to be attached to the dispute letters when they're generated. You see here, you can upload a social security card. You can upload other documents, but none of those will actually attach to the dispute letter. So what we often do is organize our proof documents. And when I say proof documents, I'm talking about the photo ID, the proof of address, the social security card. I organize those. So I'll put like proof of address and the ID on one page and then take a, you know, screenshot of that and upload it to credit repair cloud. And you just have to organize it by, you know, taking a screenshot of it, organizing it like in Microsoft word or something. And, um, then taking, you know, a picture of that and uploading it. So it will be your, basically you're condensing the items. So it, all three documents will be attached to every single dispute letter because 
at the end of the day, the credit bureaus, if you're um, wanting to change personal information uh, or pretty much anything, it's always good practice to send the photo ID, the social security card, and proof of address because that's what the credit bureaus are asking for clients to send in. Uh, when they are changing their address, when they're asking for anything to, you know, be updated on their credit file so they can verify that you are who you say you are and you're not somebody else. So oftentimes they might respond and say, hey, we can't verify you. We can't locate your credit file. That's usually because you didn't send all those proof documents in to them. So let's go ahead and get everything started because we, we actually put their photo ID and their proof of address onto one page and we uploaded that one page here and then we can upload the social security card when we receive it uh, we can upload that to the utility bill and it will still say utility bill but really what would be attached is the photo ID and the um, proof of address because that's on one page and then the social security card because that's on another page so sometimes you kind of have to manipulate the system to do what you wanted to do and just try to stay smarter than the computer right which is sometimes is very hard so now um, what we are going to do is we've imported the credit report and we provided the client with a free credit analysis using credit repair cloud and that's pretty much like step one and we have other training videos on how to provide a credit analysis so make sure to watch those inside of the credit repair playlist on YouTube, which is below in the description. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to tab two, where we are going to tag the pending report because the credit report's been uh, uploaded and it's literally, it was just waiting for payments, waiting for us to tag it and create the letters. So in part one of this video, we're going to be tagging the report and then we're going to generate the letters, which is very important because this is how we get things deleted off the credit reports. So we're just going to hit tag and save pending report. And this is going to open up the pending credit report that is inside of credit repair cloud. And this is just the pending report that we used from smart credit. Uh, we always recommend smart credit. If you have not signed up to become an affiliate with smart credit, make sure that you have signed up using the link below so you can become a preferred partner directly with smart credit and you can offer your clients smart credit reports you can get the 3b credit reports which is the three bureau credit reports meaning you get all three credit reports from experian equifax and transunion side by side and it's compatible with credit repair cloud it's super easy to read it's a great program and we recommend it. So if you need to sign up, use the links below and get signed up today. So what we're going to do is we're going to update pretty much all of the personal information first. We want to make sure that the name is correct. The address is correct. Um, employer is correct. I'm not going to really mess too much with the employer because next time they apply for anything with their credit, whatever employer they put down will be, you know, updated anyways. But as far as the name, one of the names is just listed twice. And so that is considered inaccurate and we want it corrected because we only want one name variation on the credit report. And moving forward, when you apply for credit or when you have your clients apply for credit, make sure they are using the same name variation. So if they're using first name, middle, initial, last name, make sure that's the same on all applications. We're also going to select any old and outdated addresses. In this case, the client does have a new address. So we're going to select all of the addresses and we're going to update his address. Um, we are going to then select the, any inquiry that is not associated with an account on the credit profile. And at this point, none of these are. So we're going to just go ahead and select our custom reason and the instruction okay and then we're going to go ahead and for that we just say you know hey remove it from my credit report right um there is a lot of accounts with this client he has a total of 58 total negative accounts we are looking for words like derogatory charge off collection we can since this is a round one at this point we're just validating the accounts we are literally just saying hey i if you can't prove it you have to remove it 
And that's what round one is all about. It's really just about initially putting it under dispute and um, challenging them on the validity of if, if this account is actually valid or not. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just use the same thing for all of these because looking at this account, looking at these accounts, a lot of them are just old charge off collections. And at this point, the client, he does not recall most of these accounts. So there's some that he says that, you know, actually belong to a family member that have the same name. So that might be where some of these accounts originated from. At this point, we, need, we just need to validate all of these accounts that are listed as, you know, a negative account. When you're looking for negative accounts, the great thing about the software is that it does all the work for you. Anything that's negative is going to come up in red. So we're going to say, hey, look, we're validating. I want you to validate all of this information and we can just go round by round every month we dispute everything that's negative on the credit report with each credit bureau Experian Equifax and TransUnion and with the creditors now I only add about maybe five to seven items per letter but I'll use multiple letters now here's a weird one we've got a negative account with just Experian the other two are not reporting anything negative so what we're going to do is we're going to put we're going to put misleading false reporting unverified inaccurate but i'm going to put a misleading fall uh, actually i'm going to put we're going to need to put this data is not accurate and what we might want to do is uh send a screenshot of the credit report showing that hey experian you're the only one that's reporting this negative information and I am asking that you delete it from my credit report because here's the proof that Equifax is reporting this, you're reporting this, even TransUnion is saying that there is no negative information for these accounts. So where are you getting this uh, data from? Let me, let me be clear on, on that. So uh, we're just going to kind of keep it very general and the main thing is just adding a reason why you're disputing it it can be hey this information is invalid this information is fraudulent this information was due to identity theft this information is invalid this information is simply erroneous you know anything that you can do to say this information is not correct wrong fraud identity theft, whatever the case may be, right? We want to just list why you're disputing it and what you want done about it. Do you want them to update it? Do you want them to change the information? Do you want them to delete it? What do you want them to do? Because you need to be clear on the instruction. When we have late payments, generally what we want them to do is either delete the entire account or we want them to update the late payment to paid as agreed because the trade lines aren't always bad it's just a matter of getting them updated so there's no negative information so we'll see we'll see what transpires after this round one so we can kind of get an idea of what's left for the client because um, i will say this even though we get items removed from a credit report does not mean that you don't owe the debt okay it simply means that this debt might not be reported on your credit report but if you owe like this client has a ton of student loans which i actually need to get on a call with him and discuss a, a rehabilitation plan for this because there's so many student loans that are in a derogatory status and what we need to do is called uh, rehabilitation so we need to do a student loan rehabilitation where we contact the department of education and go through that process so uh, we help our clients do that and it's very important because this this debt does not go away okay they will take your taxes they will garnish your paycheck they will get their money one way or another okay so let's just deal with it head on 
All right, moving on here is an account. It's got a zero balance and you know, you got to understand why these accounts are showing up in red, right? And sometimes you have to view more detail to really get an idea of why and what you got to do. So you'll see here the account rating, one says paid, one says closed. That pretty much means the same thing. So we're not going to really stress too much off that. But the payment status is listed as 60 days late. So that's the reason why this is coming up red. And you can see the late payment status is listed as incorrect. So what we're going to do is just say that the data uh, for this account is, you know, inaccurate and erroneous, invalid. It's, you know, whatever you want to describe it, right? Be creative. I sometimes look up on Google, what's another word for fraudulent? What's another word for inaccurate? You know, and I'll use all these different types of words because you don't ever want to just use what everyone else is using. You want to try to think outside of the box, be creative, um, try new things, but you know, just use the general concept behind it. People that are successful take the same concept and they put uh, their own spin on it. Okay. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We're just doing the remix. Okay. We're not reinventing the wheel. Okay. I didn't come up with all this information. Neither did you. Neither, neither did the person who taught me. It's the same thing. It's been the same for years. It's just getting a little bit more defined as we move along in this technology world. Okay. Credit Bureau has been around for over a hundred years. So this is nothing new. It's just you know, the process and you still got to go through the process. And while many people might think, Oh, mailing letters in is so old school. Yes, it is, but it works. Okay. And that's how we do it. We mail our letters in. So here's another, uh, collection account, same situation. This client said that they actually don't even know what this is. So we're going to just say that we believe we've been a victim of identity theft for that account. The other ones would, that would not apply to, but just this just a few of these that uh, the client is saying hey look I I don't know what that is but um, it does not belong to me and I have never had an account with this person before so that is the case for some of these accounts not all of them and of course like if you have an account or a client that um, has been a victim of identity theft they're going to need to send um, some sort of additional documentation to you, like whether they filed a report or they filled out a truth affidavit. Um, they can fill out truth affidavits, uh, identity theft truth affidavits, and they can get those notarized by a public notary at a UPS store uh, or, you know, any sort of public notary location. Uh, you can even do public notaries online in some states, not all states, but some states. Um, let me see here. Where, what am I looking for? Sometimes I get lost in my own sauce in here. Okay. I have so many different custom reasons and instructions. Sometimes it's like, Oh man, I need to, um, clean some of these up. Cause I have so many, I tried different things out, you know, and sometimes it'll be like almost the same thing, just slightly different. Cause I'm like, well, what if I say it this way? Or what if I say it that way? Is it really going to make a difference? And the truth of the matter is no, you know, because a lot of the times, um, it's the supporting documentation that is most important. All right. So we've got all of these negative accounts and it's going to be fun to see what uh, is able to be removed from the credit report come next round because there are, you know, there's a lot of accounts that do belong to this client and there's a lot that don't. So it's going to be, it's going to be a challenging uh, ride. And, you know, of course, like most clients, they are in a rush because they, you know, need, need to get something with their credit. But unfortunately, things like this do take time. And one of the main questions that I'm asked is how long is this going to take? And that is a really great question because everybody is different. You know, every situation is very unique, right? And it is a case by case basis. 
But when you have, when you're starting off with this amount of um, accounts that are negative, that are you know affecting you in a negative manner, it is going to take a while to recover from this. Whether it's uh, from identity theft or not, it is going to take a while to recover from this. Because not only are we going to have to focus on the first step of the two-step process here, but we are going to have to focus on um, basically adding trade lines and building credit and building a whole new credit report because the only thing that this client has on their credit report that actually is like positive, no late payments, um, is an authorized user account. And that's somebody else's account, you know, that doesn't necessarily belong to this customer. So unfortunately we need to, we need to do some work in that department as well, which is building positive credit. All right. So we've got everything tagged. Now we are going to save our work and continue to the wizard. Once you have finished tagging everything on a credit report, it will then save the credit scores on the client's dashboard. So say you're like, okay, well, I'm going to tag the reports right now. And then, you know, I'm going to come and do the dispute letters later on. No problem. We can totally do that. Now everything is tagged. Everything is saved in there and they are ready to generate the letters. And this is where our step two process comes into, because I know my videos are long and that is definitely something that many people don't have the patience for. So I'm definitely appreciative of the time that you guys have spent with me today. I know time is precious and you chose to spend your precious time with me. So I thank you for that. But uh, we are going to just check the dashboard. I'll show you guys the credit scores that are now updated in the client's credit file. So we can see this client started off with a credit score of 586, but you saw how many negative items there are. There's 25 with Equifax, there's 22 with Experian, there's 23 with TransUnion. So this is gonna be where you can kind of see what has happened, what's been deleted, what's been repaired, what's been verified. Uh, we just keep on disputing the negative accounts until we can either figure out, do we need to settle them? Are they valid? And are we going to need to just continue to, to challenge them? You know, these are some of the questions that we have. It's a process and some people don't have the patience, but sometimes it can take 12 or more months. You know, it's, it's not an overnight process and we're still you know, building credit, you know, the only reason why this client has a credit score in remotely near the 600s is because of that authorized user account. And, you know, the good saying goes, you can't put sugar on. Sh and with that being said, make sure to stay tuned for part two.